Daddy. After countless delays, I finally sat down and rewatched Superman Doomsday. And now I'm going to re review it. I mainly want to make a rear view of this movie because of SK's video, uh, thumbcast video, whatever, of him and his friends watching it. And when I watched that video of his, it made me think like, huh, maybe I should give this movie a second chance to see if my opinion has changed. Because they gave solid points, so I decided to sit down and finally rewatch this movie. And what do I think of it now? Oh boy, this movie is much worse than I remember. It's a disaster. The writing is just god-awful. It doesn't make any sense. And the movie just feels half-assed and just thrown together for a quick buck. This movie is called Superman Doomsday, yet Doomsday is barely in it. The characters are so unlikable in this movie. Like, I don't even know where to start with this movie. This is where the biggest issue in the film lies in, is when, around the first act, before he fights Doomsday, he's with Lois in the Fortress of Solitude, and she wants to refer to him as someone else, other than Superman or Kal-El. Like, she wants to know the real him. And it, because they've been dating for six months, and she has she doesn't know any little thing about Superman, really. Well, not in, like, that way, more of him personally. Like, she thinks he's hiding something. He's actually Clark Kent. This makes you think, oh, Clark hasn't told Lois that he's Superman yet. And you think that after, until he finishes fighting Doomsday, which he dies. When he dies, she calls him Clark. And I'm sitting here thinking, which I thought the same thing the first time I saw this movie. And I'm sure many others had to think when they sat down and were like, you know, thinking about this movie. Because scenes earlier, before he fought Doomsday... She wants to know who can she call, well, Superman, besides, well, Superman, Kal-El. She wants to know the real him, which, you know, because they've been dating for six months and shit, and she doesn't really know much about him other than, you know, he's not from this world, and his space name is Kal-El. But then, when he dies, she calls him Clark, as if she knows Clark Kent is Superman. Then how come when he supposedly comes back, when it's just a fake Superman clone, and when you thought it was the real him, you still call him Superman, and not just, like, Clark, when you guys are talking privately between the two of you? Like, it's almost like she doesn't think that, you know, Clark is Superman. But when she goes to talk to Martha about Clark, she describes her relationship with Clark romantically, almost like she knows Clark is Superman, kind of hinting that. But at the end of the film... She looks surprised when she finds out Clark is Superman when he puts on his glasses. It's like, I thought you knew that when you called him Clark when he died. I guess you apparently didn't know. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. It shows you the writers just did not think this through. It's like, it's like for the first act, they had someone else. But then the rest of the film, when it got to whatever weird shit was going on with Superman's clones, it's like they got someone else. It's almost like this film had two writers. In conclusion, Lois is very stupid in this movie. I mean, you could probably play it off as her going back and forth whether she thinks Clark is Superman, but it, the writing makes it think like she knew the whole time, but at the same time acts like she doesn't. Like, it's just plain bad writing. It's like the writers forgot. It's like, again, that's one of the reasons why I feel like this film was half-assed. Now let's talk about the Doomsday battle. Oh boy, the Doomsday battle. When he's fighting Doomsday in front of Metropolis, like, he pretty much throws him into buildings and pretty much causes massive destruction, pretty much killing civilian casualties that were inside that building. And it's not just like, oh, he throws him into a building and there's a hole through the entire building. No, like, when he throws Doomsday on top of a roof, like, the building entirely collapses, probably killing millions that were inside that building. Like, you can't tell me the building evacuated because... There were people inside the building still while they were watching Superman and Doomsday fight. Like, it's literally shown in a scene where Superman got thrown to a building. There's civilians inside the window in the background. Like, there's clearly civilians inside those buildings still. And in uh, Superman's final moments, he takes Su Doomsday up in the sky, which he probably should have done earlier. It's like, when I was rewatching this, I'm, like, thinking, you know, you probably could have done that, like, earlier. Like, you know, when you froze him and then brought him up to space or something. But no, you thought of it, like, in the millisecond. Maybe the people inside those buildings could have been alive still. According to the news, it's been a week since Superman died, and the crime in Metropolis is wild. So, um, Toy Man has a bunch of kids hostage on a bus, kindergartners, and he has a bunch of money. And he has a giant robot spider that looks like an ant from the front. Which pretty much is a hint to Superman lives in one of the scripts where Superman would have fought a giant robot spider. You know, the one with Nick Cage is Superman.
So Lois gets on the bus to help the kids get out, and a baby doll, kind of a Chucky reference in my opinion, a baby doll with a knife, and pretty much she gets all the kids to safety, and am I the only one who thinks um, Toy Man looks like a pedophile in this film? Like, when the kids leave, except for one who's scared to move because of the doll on the floor, um, Toy Man refers to them as my play dates, and it's like, dude, you're like in your 50s, look at a Discord monitor. So Fake Superman comes in and stops Toy Man, and we get a Kevin Smith cameo. He's like, lame. And I'm like, shut up, man. You're probably butthurt because your He-Man series didn't do good. And scenes later, well, a couple scenes later, when um, the Fake Superman clone watches the news of them bringing in Toy Man again, it's revealed that he killed a four-year-old girl. So the Fake Superman clone takes Toy Man and drops him to his death on a police car, pretty much crushing him, well, his bones, and pretty much he's dead. And the world sees this, and the world thinks Superman has changed. Little do they know it's a clone. So a couple scenes before Toy Man's death, um, when we find out that the Superman that came back is actually a clone, Lex Luthor somehow got people to dig up the body and, you know, the evidence earlier in the film to find out, you know, Lex Corp was never there when Doomsday came to Earth. Yeah, they somehow dug up the body of Superman and cloned him and find out a billion clones later. And apparently his plan is to make an army of Superman clones and rule the skies or whatever. It's kind of dumb. Basically, what I get of it is, oh, he wants to make an army of Superman. Is That's pretty much what he wants to do. That worked for him. Oh, yeah, let's not forget the who's your daddy scene. God, it's even more worse than I remember. Then close to the scene where the fake Superman kills Toy Man, um, we see the robot voiced by Tom Kenny. Um, took Superman's real body and brought him back, pretty much. And, you know, he's trying to get his strength back. So that's why he hasn't stopped fake Superman straight away until he gets 67% of his powers back, at least enough to take down the clone Superman. But he, but while Tom Kenny, I'm going to call him Tom Kenny instead of Superman Robot. So, or we just call him SpongeBob. So the SpongeBob Robot <laughs> um, takes one of Lex Luthor's ray guns that is made of kryptonite and it could kill um, the fake Superman clone. So when he gets his strength back and wears the black suit, he takes this gun, you know, to off the Superman clone. Also, when Superman is acting out of character, the fake clone, um, Lex gives him this thing about other companies trying to discover Superman's body. And, you know, Lex is the one that has it. Well, he did until, you know, Tom Kenny or Robot Spongebob took it back. And Lex stupidly reveals to the fake clone, you know, I create you and I can end you. So he goes to a shop or a salon, hair salon or whatever, to use his x-ray vision to see how, you know, Lex is controlling him and has this little bomb plant in him or whatever, something that could, you know, just end the clone and he uses his lasers to get it out and scissors to get it out. And it's on, it's not shown, but the way you hear the sound effects, it's like, ugh, it's just nasty. I actually remember arguing with SK in his uh, Superman Doomsday stream about it, about the mirror, like, not melting and shit. Now I look at it, it's like, yeah, he was pushing it pretty hard to melt his skin, so it probably maybe should have melted the mirror. But if he's, like, shaving and shit, like, you know, that's not going to melt the mirror. Now let's talk about one of the stupidest scenes in the movie. So it's when the fake Superman clone sees a cat from the tree, and he pretty much threatens an old lady that, like, you know, he needs to focus on real threats and stuff and not save cats from trees. You know, something Superman would not say. And, he, and of course, the white cat, pretty much a Dr. Evil reference. So pretty much, you know, it's hinting that, you know, this Superman's evil. And the cops try to arrest him. Yes, arrest him. They try to put handcuffs on him. As if that's going to do anything. And then when the cops try to get their guns out, yes, their guns, to shoot him. Yes, fucking shoot him. Like, this is Superman. You guys should know who Superman is as the Man of Steel. Like, you, you cops should know guns do jack shit on him. Even if this is a clone. Yet, they don't know that. They think this is the real Superman. Like, I still can't get over this scene. And then Superman, the fake Superman, uses his eyelaters to blow up the guns. And the explosion is, like, right in their face. It's like, how did their face not get blown off? Like, half of your face should be gone. Or at least your hands that was holding the gun should be gone. Like, what? Like, rigid, like he should have, instead, we should have had it, him melt the gun, not make it explode. Because their hands and their faces are still there. Like, if this was, you know, if this had a higher, more gruesome rating, then it would have shown that. Like, this scene is just so dumb. 
from the cops trying to arrest Superman, from Superman blowing up their guns, and somehow the cops are just not harmed whatsoever. So, scenes later, Lois um, fakes seduces Lex Luthor, drugs him, and gets the evidence and finds out, well, she brings Jimmy along, and by the way, the side story for Jimmy is that he works for someone else now after Superman died. And pretty much we don't see him quit after the film ends. It's like, like, even Martha, like, the last thing we see of her in this movie when she finds out about, you know, Superman killing, or the fake Superman killing Toy Man... And, like, the last we will get mention of her is, like, oh, Clark, you better call your mom. Like, that's it. Like, we don't see her, you know, sh shed tears when she sees the real Superman or, like, she's not watching the news or anything. Like, that's really the last we see of her. It's like, again, this film ended, like, abruptly when they, when her, when, uh, when Clark and Lois made up or made out or something. By the way, back to this topic. So when they find out Lex Luthor is making an army of Superman clones... Luther tries to kill them, but the fake Superman stops him, and he's going to kill the fake Superman, but he realizes the device is gone, and the clone kills the rest of the unborn Superman clones, and pretty much tries to kill Luther, which leads him to a bunch of injuries. We're getting to the final battle, everyone. We're finally almost done with this video, or me talking about this movie. So when the real Superman returns with the um, Lex Luthor gun with the kryptonite in it, on that Tom Kenny Spongebob robot stole. I don't know. I'm just making random shit up as I go on talking about this robot that Superman created. And pretty much, you know, the fake Superman dodges it and knocks it out of real Superman's hand. And pretty much when it knocked out Superman's hand, because they were on, they were flying when it happened. And pretty much it's like, yeah, that gun is like gone. It's destroyed, shattered in pieces. Like it's gone. But then Lois comes, well, drives around and tries to find it, and she finds it with Jimmy, and it's in, and it's perfectly fine. It's like, no, that should be shattered into a billion pieces. Like, you're gonna have to get a new one if you can find it in Lex Luthor's damaged building. And now for the final battle, which I pretty much wanted to fall asleep and lay down when I was watching this movie, because... Both Supermans were pretty much running into buildings, like, anywhere in front of Metropolis, and pretty much civilian casualties probably died inside those buildings. And it wasn't just caused, it was, and it was, okay, I'm stuttering right now. And it wasn't just caused by, you know, the fake Superman clone. It was also caused by the real Superman when he was ramming into buildings. Like, those people are dead because of you. And the amount of destruction that happened in this movie. Like, you think this was only being Man of Steel of all places. And somehow this is worse in, than in Man of Steel. Because at least Superman in that film, you know, he's, like, not as experienced. Like, fine, okay, he's, like, you know, he's not as smart. But this is a more experienced Superman, so he should have thought this through more. And he uses the X-ray, not X-ray gun, the Lex Luthor kryptonite gun to kill um, fake Superman. And his last words are, protect the innocent. And real Superman says, that's why I'm here. And fake Superman dies. But somehow still grippily holding uh, real Superman down. I have no idea. It's just weird. And Lois is like, prove it that's you. And she and he kisses her and she's like, okay, that's enough for me. It's like, no, it's not really. I get a scene earlier when you were kissing him. The fake Superman clone didn't really like that. I guess that's explained. But like, come on, let's get something more real. And at the end of the film, Lois actually finds out Clark is Superman. Yet she called him Clark when he died. Ooh, this film's writing is just all over the place. And that was my re-review of Superman Doomsday. This film is a disaster. It's worse than I remember. The characters are so unlikable. Superman is character assassinated from when he's fighting um, Doomsday and his fake clone. Like, he's ramming them into buildings, killing civilian casualties. Like, I don't think any of the writers thought that through, but it's pretty obvious people died inside those buildings. And it's Superman's fault for that because he should have thought this through. Especially if he's more experienced than, you know, DCU Superman at the time. I really don't understand why Lex wants to make an army of Supermans. I guess because he wants to be superior, I guess, or whatever. I don't know. Lois is kind of an idiot in this movie because she... Some, I don't know. The writing just makes her look dumb, in my opinion. The rest of the characters I don't care for in this movie. They're just, like, never shown again once the film ends. So for my inclusion, my official new conclusion for Zoom and Doomsday, you can check out my original review for the rating, but for my new rating for Zoom and Doomsday, 
it's a 2 out of 10. I was going to be generous and give it a 3, but I have to give it a 2 out of 10. It's a garbage movie, and I'm never going to watch this movie ever again. Like, this film is just atrocious. Like, I would definitely now put this... I think I did put this in my top 10 worst DC anime movies of all time. So, originally, I did think it was a bad movie, but I didn't think it was as bad as the ones that are in the top 5. But this is in my top 5 worst DC anime movies of all time. It's worse than Superman Brainiac Attacks and worse than Superman Red Sun. But at least with Superman Brainiac Attacks, like, at first, I didn't understand why Superman just changed his mind not telling what was a Superman. But as, you know... Months and, well, based, not a year, because it's been a year, but as months went on, I started to realize, oh, it was to protect her. Kind of like with Superman 2. Like, yeah, like, I wasn't a fan of how it was portrayed in those two films. But, you know, he did to protect her. Like, the Superman, those Superman care. Like, that's what makes this those mo two movies superior than this film. So, yeah, 2 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching. And there's a couple more DC anime movies that were moved to HBO Max, and I plan on reviewing them. And I don't plan on reviewing any other DC animated films unless it's like, unless I'm like, you know what, I think I want to give these films a second chance. But as for this film, I'm never watching this film ever again. Like, I can't even get paid to do it. Like, I'm not rewatching this film ever again. It stays a 2 out of 10. One of the worst Superman movies ever made.